be in the house of the Lord this morning. Praise God. As you are turning with me in the book of Psalms, the 51st chapter, I will go over the announcements this morning. Amen. Before I begin to minister the word, first of all, to all of our visitors and guests, we thank you for coming this morning. So glad that you're here. Yes. Amen. There will be camp meeting in Lufkin this week, and many will be traveling. We're asking that you keep them, keep us in your prayers. Some are going for a lot of the week. Some are just going for a portion of the week. But I encourage you, if you can make even one night to go, you'll enjoy it. Amen? Amen. So that's in Lufkin going on this week. Sister Bacchus has rather nice. Everybody say for five dollars. Five dollars. I love rat and nice. You can sharpen rat and nice. That's what makes them so nice. So, amen. If you work in the kitchen at all, you know there's nothing more frustrating than a dull night. Praise God. June 16th. See, I already had it. You didn't have to say it. June 16th, Brother Enrique and Sister Christine are renewing their vows. Hallelujah! And so, we need to roll the board. Amen. The invitation's on the board for the time. And uh, so, more details, you can see it there on the board. We're going to come celebrate with them as they renew. She says she's marrying a new man, see? Hallelujah! Amen. The children's ministry has homemade peach jelly for sale for $7 each, and the proceeds are going to help kids go to camp. And so yesterday, because you donated, amen, and Sister Bumgarner and others worked uh, the garage sale, they made over $300, amen. that's going to help send a couple of kids to camp. So I thank God for that, amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. amen. And then we have a Tuesday night prayer meeting, 7 o'clock, Bible study this week, prayer starts at 6.30, 7 o'clock starts our, <coughs> excuse me, our uh, Bible study this week. You want to come, be a part of that. Amen? Amen? Let's go to the word of the Lord this morning. Psalms, the 51st chapter and the 10th verse. So excited, amen, for what God is doing. Amen. Very familiar portion of scripture. The word of God reads in Psalms 51 and 10, Create in me a clean heart. O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Yes. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore. You know, we need, revival does not apply to the those that are coming in, new converts as such. Revival is for the sake. All right. It's a renewing. It's a reviving. Yes. It is a restoring. If we need a revival of something, it's a restoration of the joy. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, I need to restore my joy. Some folks get to living for God and they forget all about their joy. They get caught up in the world because they lose the joy of their salvation. Prayer doesn't mean what it used to mean to them. Worship doesn't mean... What it used to mean, and so we get caught up in the things of the world because we find more joy in the entertainment of the world than we do the things of God. Come on. So true. Yes. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. This morning, I want to preach to you the power of a right attitude. The power of a right attitude. Attitude. Lord Jesus, I thank you this morning for the opportunity to once again minister thy word. I ask you, Lord, to anoint these lips of clay. Anoint every ear to hear. Bring understanding to our mind. Help us, mighty God, to get closer to you. And that through the understanding of your word, we'd know how to approach you. In Jesus' name we pray. Church, say amen. amen. God bless you. You can be seated this morning. All right. In our text, we look into the life of David. Yes. At what was spiritually, in my opinion, his lowest point. All right. Now, he had had some low points in his life. But even in those moments, he continued to be spiritually strong. 
He may have been a shepherd on the mountainside herding sheep, but yet he had a spiritual connection with the Lord. Yes. He was running for his life, and yet even while he was running for his life and leading a band of men, he had a connection with the Lord. Even in the midst of the enemies of the people of the Lord, when he lived with the, the Philistines, yes. he had a connection with the Lord. And yet it seems that when David had obtained the palace. You see, you got to be careful when you feel like you've arrived. You have to be careful when you feel like you have it spiritually all together. Because it's in those moments that you will lose out with the Lord. Because you will begin to live off your own self-righteousness. You will begin to live off your own ability. When he faced the giant, he knew he needed the Lord on his side. When he was running for his life, he knew he needed the Lord on his side. But after a while, if you're not careful, you'll get to be a part of the church. And you'll feel like you've got it all together. That you've got it all figured out. And if you're not careful, you'll place yourself in a spiritual palace. And you'll feel like you don't have to worry about anything or anybody. I know what I'm doing. But honey, you never get too great that you don't need the Lord. He decided to stay at the palace instead of being with his armies in the time of war. Ma, 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 ma. It's not time for you to kick it back. It's not time to think you've arrived. It's time for you to go to war with the enemy of your soul who is seeking to destroy you. Because he stayed back at the palace uh, and that he was uh, then uh, tempted uh, by the lust of his flesh uh, when he looked upon the woman Bathsheba. And because he was tempted, uh, he committed adultery. Hey, come on, come on. And adultery is just as wrong today as it was then. Yes, hey, then to make matters worse, he tried to cover up his sin by having her husband murdered. Then the man of God comes to his house and begins to preach him a sermon about a man and a sheep. And he begins to preach about how the man had one sheep that he loved, that he cherished, that he cared for. And another man had many sheep. But the man that had many sheep had some guests. And so instead of taking from his own, he went and took that prized lamb from his neighbor. And David was up uh, you know, outraged and angry and he says, uh, I'll take care of it. I'll, I'll destroy that man who took that one precious lamb uh, and the man of God as I am doing this morning uh, pointed his finger uh, at David and said, you are the man. Sometimes uh, you got to stop pointing your fingers at everybody else uh, and look at yourself in the mirror and say, you know what? You're all the man. Of God, and I know the only way I can get back to God is say, Created me, O 
salvation. Hold me with thy free spirit. Created me. Created me. Make it new, Lord. Develop it all over again. That clean heart. Renew a right spirit. Renew a right attitude. Because David approached the Lord in the right way. Surely, amen, he was restored. Oh, it's still costing. Be sure your sins will find you out. That's right, sir. There is a price to pay for sin. Don't think you're getting by. All right. Thank you. The Lord knows all things. See, the Lord responds not just to our asking, but to our attitude or spirit. What got David back on the right path was that he wasn't pointing fingers and saying, well, the reason I'm backslidden, the reason why I'm not living for God is because brother so-and-so said this, or sister so-and-so said this, or the pastor did this, or the church did that. I've heard all the excuses why you can backslide. But at the end of the day, the only reason you backslide is because you choose to backslide. You choose to walk away from God. You choose to walk away from God. You determine your attitude. Amen. You choose to, how you respond to people. I'd like to. Well, praise God. I better be right. I better keep myself calm. Oh, come on and preach. Come on. Sometimes when I talk to folks, I'd like to just. Not choke them, just give them a swift kick. Sometimes you need a swift kick. Come on. I know that may not be politically correct. True. Or a good old fashioned swap. Yay. Some of us need a good old fashioned daddy swap. I didn't get a lot of spankings from my father. I, I, I probably told you about the whoopings I've got, the reason why I got them. But I got plenty of good swats. Usually when I was kind of dragging. Come on, boy. Pick up the pace. Get a move on. Sometimes we need a good old fashioned swap to get our attitudes right. Uh -huh. Come on. Come on. That's good. Get our spirits right. Yes, sir. right. Instead of blaming everybody else for everything, we can say, you know what? Uh, I got to take care of me. Come on. Well, praise God. I guess I'm going to dig a little deeper. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Your attitude, your spirit determines a lot of things in living for God. Else. He only blamed himself. See, the Lord responds as much to the why as he does how. And if we desire to get heavenly results, we always must approach him in the right way. You know attitude smell? Yes. Huh? Oh, come on. It must because people say, man, you got a stinking attitude. Come on. Now, stinking attitudes never have positivity with them. They never encourage. They're laced in negativity. They're always seeing the problem, not the solution. Come on, man. Amen. That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. Well, I bet this happened. Well, let me meddle over on this side of the road. Come on. Come on, brother. Amen. Hey, brother, brother, why do you get y'all fired up, full of faith, and pastor comes in here and starts passing? My, 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 my. <laughs> Come on, man. Preach to us. Come on. Good stuff. Good. You know, with that attitude, you know, everybody else is blessed. I'm never blessed. 
And if there's one thing that I cannot stand is somebody that's always, everybody hates me, nobody likes me, I'm going to eat a worm. <laughs> People claiming to have the Holy Ghost. I don't know about you, but I, I have the Holy Ghost.
humble, you humble yourself before the Lord, you find grace. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. He's a merciful, long-suffering Lord. Yes. Yes. See, the how and the why of your petition will determine the outcome of whether or not you see the results of your prayer. Yes. Yes. There's many that pray, but they pray amiss. They pray out of their own lust. They pray out of their own desires. They pray out of their own wants. Yes. The why often dictates the attitude of the how. That's good. True. Oh, y'all y'all miss that. Come on, say it again, Pastor. The why often dictates the attitude of the how. Yes, it does. Why you're praying a certain thing will determine how you pray that certain thing. The spirit behind it. Why often determines many things. Mission, or Pastor Briggs used to say it like this. Uh, you know, God doesn't care what you do. He cares why you want to do it. And I've, I've preached that here several times. I'm going to keep saying it. God doesn't care why you, why do you want to go to the movie house. Why do you want to go to this event or that event? Why? What's your motive? Come on. He doesn't care if you go. He cares why you want to go. You want to be more like the world? You want to be in touch with the world? Then go do those things. But if you want to be in touch with God, then you're going to go to prayer meeting. Uh -huh. All right. If you want to be in touch with God, you're going to be a worshiper. A if you want to be in touch with God, you're not going to hold back your you. The why often dictates the how. Now, how many of you feel like maybe the Lord doesn't answer your prayers? Oftentimes people feel that way. But here's why. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. There's nothing wrong with the Lord. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, there ain't nothing wrong with the Lord. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's nothing wrong with the Lord. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. So what separates you from God? Your sin, your iniquities. God has to hide his face. You can pray all day long. You say, well, does the Lord hear a sinner? Absolutely. He hears everybody. <laughs> But when a sinner stands proudly and says, Lord, you do what I tell you to do. <laughs> he may hear everybody, but he only listens to those that are humble. Amen. He said, the sin that separates you. I have to hide my face from you. I cannot hear you because of your sins, your proud spirit, your attitude. Wow have separated you from me. Your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongues have, have uttered perverseness. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity. Speak lies. They conceive mischief. Bring forth it. Sin upon sin. And whether you're in the church, out of the church, sin Will separate you. Yes, man. Yes. He resists it. Yes. Whether you're in the church, out of the church. Yes. So, how are you approaching it? Why are you approaching it? <coughs> the Lord is able to answer any prayer. But if you desire for Him, you have to change your approach. Vain repetition won't get it. I told the church, you know, my, I think the Lord like, He has a sense of humor. The Lord has a sense of humor. My mother-in-law was praying one time in family prayer. And she, she said, to Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And my father-in-law said, what, what, what? <laughs> I was up here praying one 
one morning and, and I, I got kind of stuck, stuck in that rut myself. And I said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And the Lord spoke back, Michael, Michael, Michael. <laughs> okay, I get it. All I'm doing is just repeating words. I'm not really talking to you. I'm not really giving a petition. But the way we approach the Lord often determines the outcome. Let's look at the Word of God in 1 Samuel. The first verse. First chapter. Ninth verse. First Samuel. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post in the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. I would say she was humble and contrite. She vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her now. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she would have been drunk. Eli said to her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out Do you see there's the power of a right attitude when you come before the Lord I'm not drunk Eli I'm burdened and I'm heavy and I'm poured out of me out of that well of bitterness out of that well of hurt is something pouring out of me and I'm pouring out my soul for the Lord Count not thine handmaid for a daughter Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Out of my situation, out of my circumstance, my attitude's not wrong. I'm heavy and I'm burdened. See, you can be heavy and burdened and still have a right attitude. You don't have to be heavy and burdened and be upset with the world. You can turn to Jesus and say, Lord, I can't bear this another day. I'm turning it to you, Lord Jesus. I'm not a daughter of this world. I'm a daughter of the cross. And so I'm bringing you my cares for you said to cast your cares upon me. Then Elias said, answered and said, Go in peace. And the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. Oh, the man of God answered her prayer. The man of God spoke into her life. And she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. Isn't it a wonderful thing when you know you've approached the Lord with the right spirit and you know you've received an answer? Amen. Amen. Oh, preach for a minute to you. Sometimes you may be weary and well doing, but faint not. Amen. For you shall reap in due season. I'm preaching to somebody this morning. You may be heavy of heart today. You may be carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. The weight of your family on your shoulders. But when you begin to pour out your soul up to the Lord. Understand when you get to a place that you know that you know. That's what Bishop McLean called it. You pray until you know. And then when you know, recourse. And I'm telling some this morning, you may have a heavy heart, but if you will come with a right attitude and pour your heart out to the Lord and get up with a knowing, God has given me a promise and I'm going to stand on His promise. I may not see my promise, but I know it's coming. Therefore, I'm going to rejoice. Her countenance went one from sadness to rejoicing. One of us. To great rejoicing. I'm trying to tell somebody your attitude determines everything. Oh, the countless went from one 
of sorrow to joy and happiness. My, 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 my. I'm trying to tell somebody, lift up thy head and be lifted up. Lift up your head and be lifted up. Lift up your head and be lifted up today. Mm. Don't let your attitude keep the things that God wants to give you from you. Amen. Can you just imagine she had that word? She was given a word for a child. The man of God said, according to your petition, it's done. Yes. And so she woke up the next morning and there was that baby boy. Yes. Is that right? Yes. He gave her the word to David and the next day the baby was there. No. No. Oh, wait, that's right. Some prayers it takes just two days. So, so she, she received the word from Eli on Monday and Wednesday she had the baby boy. Oh, okay. So a month later, she and she received the word, first of June, first of July, there was Samuel. No, how about first of August? No, uh, there was a process taking place. The promise was being birthed inside of her. Good. 
That offends some of y'all. Hallelujah. Brother Bum Garner, I want you to pray for this in my life. Well, right now it's not your time for blessing. I know you can't have a blessing, brother man. It's not your time. Huh. And then on top of that, he calls her a dog. He says, I'm sorry. I can't take meat off my children's table and feed it to you. You're right there with the dogs. What an attitude. Some of us, if the Lord had spoken to us like that, would have gotten bitter and angry. I said, I'll never step into that church again. Hey, come on. Come on. How dare he talk to me like that? Come on. How dare he embarrass me like that? Come on. Mm, I felt those spirits before. I know how they rise up. You're not telling me. I pastored long enough to know. Come on. Come on. Good. How dare he speak to me in that fashion? Yeah. Well, if you get rid of that pride, you know, I wouldn't have to talk to you in that fashion. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. But she said, that's all right. You can call me what you want. But I got an attitude and a spirit that says, Yea, Lord, get the dogs under the table. Eat of the children's crumbs. You're not going to change my attitude. I've got a need. I've got a situation. You can call me a dog if you want to. You can tell me it's not my time. For the blessing, but I'm still going to remind you, even dogs uh, get crumbs and sheep. And he answered in her saying, For this day, go thy way, the devil is gone out of your collar. Right. What was it? It was the power of an attitude, it was the power of a right spirit, it was the power of saying, You know what, Lord, if I keep my spirit right, there's nothing that you'll hold back from me. Hallelujah, I'm telling all of them. 
cannot move on your behalf. Come on, I'm going to these offers this morning. God's already doing a work in this house. But who can approach you today with a right attitude? Lord, forgive me of my pride. Forgive me of my arrogance. Take me to the King. Take me to the King. Come on, somebody. Come approach the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords today. Say, Lord, I know my heart. Sometimes I've been a little arrogant. Sometimes I've been a little full of pride. Would you, Lord, hear my cry today? Would you hear my voice today? I'm not giving up, Jesus. I'm not giving up, Lord. That's it. Come on. Come on, the Lord's moving in this house. Worship team, begin to sing. Church family, can you begin to gather around the letter and pray? I don't believe there should be anybody sitting in the pew this morning. Everybody should be at the altar talking to the Lord. Oh, <laughs> 
as you dismiss, I invite you back tonight. We're going to have another wonderful service tonight. Prayer is going to start at 6. Service is going to start at 6.30. I encourage you to come and let God touch you. If you're praying tonight, this morning, you, you don't have to stop praying. We never close the altar. We're going to I do encourage you to come back for another word or worship tonight. Please understand, I'm not upset at anybody. I love everybody. But I know this, when we get our spirits right, we approach God in the right way. Miracles happen. Prayers are answered. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the spirit of worship that was in the house today for the exhortation of your word, for the message that was given to this beautiful church, Lord. I pray, God, that you would bring us back into this house tonight, Lord Jesus, that we could be worshiping you again, Lord, in spirit and truth. Somebody can receive what they need if they will only turn themselves to you, Lord, completely give themselves to you, and know that you sit upon the throne of righteousness. We give you glory and honor today, Lord Jesus. Thanking you for another wonderful time in your presence. Bring us back tonight in Jesus' name we pray. And the church say amen. 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 Please be mindful of those that are praying. God bless you here this morning.